y'all. So I thought I'd do a little update, a little vlogging maybe. I am actually not going to be reading In the Key of Us this month because it comes out in April, not February, which I got wrong on my TBR. So instead, I've been listening to Noor by Nnedi Okorafor on audiobook. I love Nnedi Okorafor. I love Akata Witch and Akata Warrior so much. And I can't wait to read the third book in that series whenever it comes out. Noor is, I think, a novella. I'm not sure because I'm listening to it on audiobook. I'm listening to it as I'm gardening. Uh, so far, I really like it. It's about a cyborg person with lots of cybernetic implants facing discrimination for that. I'm just planting my like winter spring garden right now because I think we've passed the first frost. This is February 10th. I mean past the last frost. Um, and February and March is the best time in Houston to grow lots of lettuce. So I'm planting lots of lettuce and herbs that I got from the garden center. I did try to do growing from seed last year but I just don't really have a good greenhouse setup situation and it's like a whole lot of work so I've just kind of resigned myself to buying starters every year I think it's worth it so and then in the summer over summer I can grow like peppers jalapenos um grow pretty well in my garden um so yeah I'll show you what I've been planting so here's my garden so far uh, this is the only legacy plant my rosemary survived from last summer. Everything else died because it gets like just too hot, especially in like September and October. Um, things just don't seem to make it through the summer. So I've got some sage, that's some mint, dill, some lavender. I can never get lavender to grow, but this was a really pretty varietal and I've never tried this one before. I'm trying it in sort of a new spot. It's Eastern facing, so it's not the best. It gets morning sun and a little bit of afternoon sun, but then the house blocks the sun. So here's some kind of lettuce or cabbage or something. There's some lettuces, some bok choy, parsley and cilantro. The only herb I didn't get that I really wanted was thyme. They didn't have any thyme, which is weird. My little veggie herb garden. This is pretty much the sunniest spot I have to work with besides like the very, very front of my house along the sidewalk. And that's where I have a little pocket prairie. I found a little friend who got trapped in the garden, Mr. Toad. Let's see if we can get him and free him. Oh, careful. So here's our little toad buddy. Boop, hello. All right, you're gonna be happier over here where you can be free. So I'm gonna, vlog today because I have a lot of stuff going on um and I've never like done a vlog of just like what I'm doing in a day uh but so I'm gonna do some more gardening I just finished dropping off the kids at school I'm planting blue bonnets this morning so I got a pallet of 20 blue bonnets yesterday and I um really like having blue bonnets in my yard in the spring so those are going in the ground I'm going to be working on my pocket prairie a little bit. I'll show it to you, but I'm obviously like very wary about showing the front of my house in video, so it'll have to be like pretty close up shots. Um, but yeah, I'll show you when I'm done later. Um, hopefully I'll be able to, I'll be listening to Noor on audiobook the whole time. Um, I also finished New Kid last night. It took me just like two nights to read the graphic novel. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'll talk about it more in my wrap up video. And then, and then I have the tattoo removal appointment later and then I have to bake hala which I'll show you guys how I do that a little bit. Uh, JVP organizing group is coming over so I'm involved with Jewish Voice for Peace Houston. We're organizing the first ever chapter and Jewish Voice for Peace is an organization that supports um, this is an anti-Zionist organization supporting a free Palestine of made up of Jews so um, they're coming over at five we're gonna have a little like working planning meeting plus Shabbos with some challah and some wine and socializing and building community so I'm really excited about that. Okay so I wanted to show you what I'm doing with my pocket prairie here. So I started uh, this project last winter and I started digging up this little bit of sidewalk we have which is actually the part of our property that gets the most sun planting native flowers and grasses instead um, I did it in two different stages which is why if you look at it zoomed out there's like a very stark difference in plants and that's what I'm trying to do this morning is I'm transplanting some of the plants from over here to over there um, and this side the grasses the native seed grasses ended up sprouting a lot more so there's a lot of grass on this side then the flowers that have been over here reseeded um, and I 
I scattered additional seeds, but all that came up was like the flowers. There's a whole lot of yellow flowers here. We've got like cone flowers, which are already, they're doing kind of an early bloom. Um, and they're just kind of done. I think they're going to, they, they kind of died in the freeze, but I think, you know, they'll bounce back for the spring. Um, but it's mostly cone flower and uh, golden tick, uh, tick seed over here. Um, and I want a little more diversity, so I'm transplanting grass from over there to here to kind of try to make this all blend better and then transplanting some of the cone flowers over here, over there. Um, and I also bought some starters of some purple and pink plants, some showy primrose and uh, mist flower to add some more color in here. And I transplanted some echinacea I had in another garden to the front so that hopefully there will just be like a lot more color and um, interest but I'm really excited for the spring um, for how gorgeous this is going to be every single one of these is a flower plant I'm worried that I scattered the seeds too den densely and that they're maybe competing for water a little bit too much um, but we'll see we'll see how it goes hopefully what I'm doing with transplanting the grasses is going to give some of the um, some of these plants a little bit more room to breathe and and really set a bunch of flowers. 20 blue bonnets. These are all going to be beautiful blue bonnets, our Texas state flower. And this half of the sidewalk I have not gotten to yet. Um, I haven't removed the sod here, but I think I'll do what I started to do last year, which is just digging holes in the sod and planting 20 of the blue bonnets over in this patch of grass. And um, later in the year, I'll kind of go through and start removing the sod which is a whole shit ton of work but it is a very good workout so you know um yeah that's what I'm up to today so I just got my tattoo removal appointment done I'll show you a clip of that um I have a very angry tattoo now um I've been getting this laser off for about two years uh, it does hurt like hell. It hurts a lot more than getting a tattoo does. But if you just breathe through it, it's okay. I mean, it's not like childbirth or anything. <laughs> this is a pretty sensitive spot, like the inner arm, especially like up near my armpit. It gets really, really sensitive. Um, but, you know, there's definitely worse spots it could be. And it's not like a fully shaded, you know, sleeve or anything. Let's make some holla. Okay, so this is the recipe that I always use, and it's from this book, Modern Jewish Cooking. I will say that all the recipes I've ever made out of here have been incredible, but the only thing that makes me uncomfortable about this book now, like in the last couple of years, is that there's a number of recipes for food that is um, like traditional Palestinian food or has its roots in Arabic food, and there's no acknowledgement of that. I don't know if the author is a Zionist or what, but it is complicated to be an anti-Zionist Jew. Um, and so I probably, I don't know if I should recommend this book for that reason, but the challah recipe is really good. So what we're going to be using is yeast. This is just active dry yeast. I bought a pound of it at the start of the pandemic when you couldn't get small amounts of yeast and I've kept it in the fridge ever since and it's still good. And I made a ton of bread with it. Um, kosher salt, sugar, three eggs uh, for the dough, and then there'll be one egg later on for the egg wash. Hala gets a double egg wash, which is what gives us this really shiny, beautiful crust. Um, flour, of course, I'm just using APF, uh, vegetable oil, and honey. So it's a pretty simple recipe. I'm gonna bloom the yeast and measure out my dry ingredients. First, you gotta get the water really, really hot. Okay, so this is the first set of steps. 
The heat is really important because that kind of wakes up the yeast that's been chilling in the fridge. And um, all these little bubbles, you can see that's the yeast starting to fart and eat the sugar. <laughs> it's eating the sugar and it's farting and it's making bubbles and the bubbles are what make bread fluffy and airy, right? And then here I just measured out, I always use a scale for making bread. Um, because especially living in Houston, bread recipes are really off because our, I think our weather is so like humid here that, um, flour by weight is a better judge of its mass than, um, volumetric measurements. So plus it's just easier. You can just like dump it in, you know, from the flour container and you don't have to, um, like think like, like, you know, spoon each cup and then, and then pour it in. I'm going to go ahead now and I add, um, I'm going to add the vegetable oil, the eggs, and the honey to this. Whisk it up really well, and then I'll be adding that into here and starting to form a dough. Okay, so to knead, I like to do it on a cutting board, and if you put a wet towel under the cutting board, it won't slip. And we're going to knead for eight minutes until it turns into a supple dough, and I'll show you what that looks like. For some reason, I made this recipe a week ago, and the dough came out really sticky and wet, and I had to add a ton of flour while I was kneading. This dough is already feeling pretty dry, like I might even need to add a little liquid, so I'm gonna be trying to add as little flour as possible while I'm kneading it. But that's kind of the thing with bread baking is that you just have to like know what the dough is supposed to feel like um, because the recipe is gonna be different every day depending on how dry the air is and stuff. So, um, and just like, I don't know how the flour is feeling and how the yeast is feeling. I'm not really pushing down. I just roll, just rolling the bread across the cutting board is enough to create um, the gluten development. It's still a workout because it's a big ball of dough. <laughs> Now we're gonna let that rest a minute and uh, clean out this bowl because this is the bowl is going to rise in. It's looking a little bit smoother and better. Sometimes you just need a little extra, just need a little extra something. I just had to do a bit of work, authory work, which was um, I got to sign a contract for um, my short story. I have a solar punk short story that's coming out in an upcoming anthology, Solar Punk 
Sunscapes, it's called. It's coming out with AK Press, which is very cool, radical, anti-capitalist, leftist press. And uh, they are publishing this cool solo punk anthology, and one of my stories was picked to be in it. So that's exciting. Another exciting thing is I got sent my first royalties check today uh, and royalties report um, for Depart to Part. So my book earned out its advance last year, it took just like the full year, it like earned out its advance right at the end of the year. So this was the first year that I earned royalties on it. Um, and that's an exciting feeling. It's not a whole heck of a lot. It's a small press. We didn't sell a zillion copies. Um, but it's, you know, it's a chunk of money, actually. I'm sort of presently surprised. I was kind of thinking it was going to be maybe like 20 bucks, uh, but it was significantly more than that. So i um, feeling good about those things. And yeah, now I have some downtime while the bread is rising. Now I really am going to read. So I did read over the last hour, uh, but I was cleaning my house. <laughs> so I was listening to Noor on audiobook and cleaning because we're going to have people over later, although we're going to do our work in the backyard, you know, they'll probably go through the house to go to the bathroom or whatever. So I kind of wanted it to be clean. So that's what I've been doing. Now it's time to get the dough out, check out how the first rise looks. And then we will braid it into a hala, you know, a braided loaf, and brush it with an egg wash. And then we let it prove for another half hour before I start warming up the oven. Moment of truth. Um, it has a nice rise on it. And at this point, we get to push out the air. Oh, it's very squishy. You can see all the little bubbles. Those are all the little, little yeast farts. That's what makes bread yummy. Okay, I'm gonna um, get this out, cut it up, start braiding it. Editing me here. Uh, tragically, I accidentally hit the slow-mo mode on my camera for like the best part of hala baking, which is dividing the dough into six pieces, rolling them out into snakes like Play-Doh, and then braiding them together. So I'm so sorry if you were following along with my hala video. There's a zillion others on the web you can watch to see how to do this, but I do feel very silly about it, and I clearly won't be a food tuber anytime soon. Um, so the steps after that will just be like the egg wash. We'll pick up with the egg wash. Um, the second prove and baking it. You want to avoid letting the egg drip down onto the pan because that will get underneath the bread and burn. So I was not paying attention and globbed down a little too much there. This is the part where you don't want it to dry out while it's proving. So most recipes will tell you to tint it with plastic, like saran wrap, but I don't like to use single use plastic. So we're gonna be reusing these grocery bags that I have under the cabinet. And I'll show you how you can uh, do it so that it doesn't stick to the bread and it keeps them from drying out. Okay, so this is our second rise or our prove. I'm going to let them prove for about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna come in and turn the oven on. It takes about 20, 25 minutes for the oven to come up to temperature, which is, it's actually only 375, which is a lower temperature recipe. So I might let them prove a little longer. I might let them prove a half hour and then um, take them out of the oven <laughs> and um, where they've been proving with the light on. Make sure to take the loaves out first, 
then you put the oven on 375, let it come up to temperature while they're sitting on the counter. And then they'll have been proving about 45 minutes to an hour when you put them in to bake. So the bread's in the oven. It smells amazing in here and I'm getting really hungry. Um, I just finished listening to Noor by Nydia Korafor. I loved it. I ended up um, really getting hooked. The, um, the story really picks up in the second half and it's anti-capitalist, solar punk, revolutionary. Loved it. Loved it. Um, I actually think I might use it. My publisher was telling me I need to think of comps for our book. And I hate doing comps. I always feel like I'm so original. <laughs> but I actually think Noor works as a comp for my book. Uh, so if that's not like too audacious, I'm going to propose that. Because it's the most similar, I think, to what I'm writing of any any mainstream book that I've read. Um. I'm not even sure if Noor is YA or not, um, but it feels kind of YA or YA adjacent. So um, that's going to be a comp for Seeds for the Swarm. I didn't know you need comps for publishing purposes, but I guess you do. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that today. I think I listened to the whole thing yesterday and today. Yeah. So it was kind of a short one. Um, and now I'm just waiting for the bread to come out. And this is probably the last I'll vlog today because then my kids are coming home and I don't, I don't like to put them on camera. Um, and then I'm having my meeting. I'm like super exhausted. So I think I'm going to have some tea, maybe some green tea uh, before I have to deal with the children and the group and all that. So thanks for hanging out today.